Um, each language encompasses a way of thinking, uh, a way of seeing the world. And so um, there are as many ways of thinking as there are speaking, but also many more, because yeah. even when people speak the same language, we can, they can disagree. Uh, certainly we see that all over the world. Um, I think often people think of um, having lots of languages or lots of different opinions as a bad thing. We think of it as a source of disagreement, but I see it as a source of richness, that you have a lot of different perspectives to draw on, and so you can use a lot of different sources of information to solve a problem, instead of there being just um, one perspective. Any one perspective on a complex issue is going to be incomplete, it's going to be partial, it's going to be wrong in lots of ways. But the more perspectives you can bring together, the richer an understanding you can have of whatever problem you're trying to solve. Cuando hay desacuerdos o diferentes perspectivas, nos toca decir, oiga, hablemos el mismo idioma o el mismo, la misma lengua. Muchas de las desgracias o los problemas en comunicación ocurren porque no hablamos el mismo lenguaje. Uh -huh. Esto es, de, deja de ser metafórico a, a ser un poco como real desde la perspectiva del cere desde el cerebro, ¿no? Uh, finding a common language is something you have to do even if you already speak the same language, right? You have to spend, to really understand someone, you have to spend a lot of time talking to that person, understanding their perspective, learning what it is that they know. Uh -huh. um, There's this uh, wonderful quote uh, by George Bernard Shaw that I love. He says that the biggest problem with communication is the illusion that it has taken place. Um, we often think uh, we have communicated something clearly, but uh, unless we take time to listen to the other person and really get to know their perspective, it's very, very hard to communicate. So finding a common language usually involves a lot of listening first. <laughs> Uh, our brains are always changing. In fact, if you can remember anything that you did today, it's because there's been physical change in your brain. It's the, it's the only job of your brain is to continue to change and learn. Right? Mm -hmm. What it means for your brain to learn anything is for there to be physical change in how neurons are connected to one another. And so one would hope that any human brain is an unfinished product because That's the sign that you're still alive. <laughs> yeah, <okay. laughs> It's the sign that, it, that it's still working and you're yeah. still learning new things. And I don't mean that even in a lofty sense of learning new things. Just being able to make it through the day requires your brain to constantly change. ¿Pasa algo físicamente en el cerebro? That's the only kind of change there can be. <laughs> that's, the only, no. that's all there is. <laughs> yes, it has to be physical. There's no other option. It's always, I mean, it, the brain is... What's, what's amazing about the brain is that it's um, really two and a half pounds of flesh between your ears. Okay. And it's, uh, you know, this two and a half pounds of flesh that can contemplate its own existence, can have emotions, mm -hmm. can have hopes and aspirations. But at the end of the day, it's two and a half pounds of flesh <laughs> and it's yeah. all physical and all of it is just chemical interactions inside your brain. Yeah. ¿Qué cosas nos han dicho que son mentira o mitos alrededor del cerebro? Uh, the most common thing people say is that you only use 10% of your brain. Okay. Um, no one who knows anything about the brain knows how that rumor got started. It doesn't make any sense. It's impossible. So, uh, well, we have a lot of brain cells. They work just like You know, you can't say you only use 10% of your body. <laughs> it's all alive and it's all working. Yeah, today I used uh, the 10% of my leg. Yeah, no. <laughs> um, so uh, that's, that's just a made up, that's a made up number. Um, I think what is true, the kernel of truth there is that our brains are capable of a lot more than we think that they're capable of. We can learn all kinds of things that we think are beyond us. And uh, even late in life, you can acquire all kinds of new skills. Um, so the grain of truth in that, uh, in that falsehood is that there's a lot more capacity in our brains uh, that we could use if we wanted to. A lot more flexibility in our brains. Than we... o sea, pero, pero he escuchado, bueno, no mm -hmm. sé si es un mito, pero he escuchado que al cerebro no le gusta 
pensar, o sea, no le gusta, no le gusta lo complejo. Mm -hmm. es, es real. Our, our brains are, uh, are very good at coming up with fast solutions to very complicated problems. Yeah. Because uh, we're always operating in a very complicated and uncertain world. If we really stopped uh, to think through very methodically how to do something, it would take a very long time. Uh, let me give you an example. If, you, if I throw you a, a ball, if you had to stop and think, okay, what is the trajectory of the ball? What is the speed of the ball? What is the angle? I'm going to write down the calculations and do the physics, right? Uh, it would be too late. <laughs> it would be too late, right? But your brain is very, very quick at making a very, uh, a, a very rough prediction and moving your arm to be able to catch the ball. Now, it's good at making those fast, rough predictions, but for some projects, it's not good to be fast and rough. You want to be slow and you want to be deliberate. And so often we over rely on those fast, uh, rough, Uh, processes in our brain and we don't stop to think things through slowly so it's not just it's not the fact that the brain doesn't like to think it's that for survival your brain is very good at making a lot of fast usually correct yeah. guesses but um, then sometimes we over rely on those really fast guesses ¿Qué pasa en el cerebro cuando conoces por primera vez a una persona? Uh, first impressions can be very powerful. So in um, research, people sometimes show, for example, a 10 second video of a professor teaching on the first day. Mm -hmm. And if you watch that 10 second video, even if it's silent, you can very well predict the teaching ratings that that professor will receive at the end of the class. Uh, just that 10 second clip is... Just a, is, 10 second, oh. Yeah, it's, a, it's already a very good predictor. There's something about the way people carry themselves, uh, the confidence that they show, that creates a particular relationship with the class, for mm -hmm. example. So those first impressions can be very powerful. Of course, we can overcome them too, right? So you um, uh, act consistently in a way that's different from that first impression, it will uh, You, you will overcome that initial impression. But we do, we do make pretty good predictions about people when we first meet them. There is, there is a sense that, uh, that you get about a person very quickly. Your brain uh, has learned to make these generalizations about people. Some of those generalizations are true and some of them are false, but uh, it, we're making them all the time. As you're walking around seeing people, you're very quickly judging them on all kinds of external qualities, even things that you, you don't think you should be able to tell about a person, like you shouldn't be able to tell just by looking at someone if they're smart or if they're trustworthy, these internal qualities, but we make these judgments very, very quickly. Often people um, can transform the way they come across by thinking differently about their internal feelings. Often we feel nervous when you're meeting someone new, when you have an important presentation at work. Um, feeling nervous is very similar to feeling excited. Mm -hmm. Internally, they feel very, very similar. And so if you just tell yourself, when you, when you feel that little energy, instead of telling yourself, I'm nervous, tell yourself, I'm excited, that really transforms the way you come across to other people. And when you're doing something important, You should feel a little extra yeah. energy. You don't want to be sleepy. <laughs> that extra energy is good. It, it, it actually increases your performance. But the way that you think about it, if you think about it in a positive way, instead of saying, oh, I'm nervous, things are going to go bad, you say, oh, I feel that little zing, I'm excited. That excitement then translates to the people that you are talking to.